Passengers is a sci-fi film starring Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence, released in 2016, and I remember when I saw the trailers how underwhelmed I was. I didn't think this film would really be very interesting, so I didn't go to see it in the cinema at the time. Some time later, I was babysitting for my brother, and he happened to have it on DVD. So I watched it that night, with absolutely zero expectations. I was pleasantly surprised at how enjoyable the movie was. I have to say, this one is a bit of a guilty pleasure for me. It is fundamentally a romance story, but it is also a decent action sci-fi film with likeable characters, great acting, and some really fun set pieces. I'll begin by saying that though the film isn't groundbreaking or anything, I think it's genuinely pretty good and very underrated. Though I will say that the final act is a bit weak, and the film does descend into a fairly cliched Hollywood conclusion, although there's still a somewhat satisfying ending, but it's not perfect. The first two-thirds of the film are very strong, however, so I can confidently recommend this film if you haven't seen it before. The film is set aboard a massive starship called Avalon, with a crew of several thousand people all in suspended animation headed to the Earth colony planet of Homestead 2. It's an interstellar journey that will take 120 years. The passengers are all seeking a new life and a fresh start, away from the various issues facing planet Earth. But after 30 years into the journey, the ship is bombarded by asteroids. The ship has shields, but the impacts are so severe that some of the ship's systems begin to malfunction, and the first system to break down is the hibernation pods, specifically one pod, and the occupant is suddenly awoken. Jim Preston is aroused from his slumber, and the system tells him that the journey to Homestead 2 is nearly complete. You see, the passengers were supposed to be awoken four months before they arrived at the planet, and they would enjoy all of the entertainment and amenities of this very comfortable and luxurious Avalon Starliner. And I'll get to the ship a little bit later, because it certainly is a lovely ship. Anyway, hibernation pods are never supposed to break down, and the system cannot account for the malfunction, so therefore, it deduces that the ship must be arriving at Homestead 2 on schedule. But of course, this isn't the case. The ship's systems are in error. The ship is nowhere near Homestead 2, and Jim is the only passenger who has been awoken, and obviously, he has been awoken out of hibernation in error. So, Jim heads to his quarters and prepares to meet the other passengers. He attends an introductory seminar on colonial life. The pre-recorded interactive hologram begins the presentation as if the auditorium is full of people, but of course Jim is the only one there. Jim is able to at least ask the hologram some questions, although its responses are limited given its programming. He asks where everyone is, and it says that there are 5,000 passengers and 258 crew. The system does not believe that there is an issue here. He asks, so why am I alone? To which the hologram replies, we're all in this together. Huh. Yeah, I know, right? In what context have you heard that one recently? Anyway, Jim starts to sense that something is very wrong and begins running around the ship calling for anyone else who might be there. He finds the main concourse, and I have to say, at this point, the ship is just gorgeous. This is a real luxury liner, and basically like a cruise ship in space. And with so much to do on board, and machines looking after your every need... It certainly is a lovely place to spend some time. You'll see what I mean a little later. Jim asks the computer terminal to speak with the ship's steward, but the office is vacant, and when he tries to speak to the captain, he finds that he can't access the bridge because he doesn't have authorization. The bridge is locked because the crew still haven't awoken. This isn't good. He goes to the observatory and asks to see where the ship is relative to Homestead 2, and the computer tells him they will arrive in 90 years. He then realizes he's woken up too soon. He tries to send a message back to Earth, but the message will take 19 years to arrive, and the earliest reply will be in 55 years. This is rough. Despondent and in a state of disbelief, Jim walks the concourse and discovers to his relief another person, so it seems, a barman working behind a swanky-looking bar. But his hopes are soon dashed when he realizes he's an android. Arthur is played by Michael Sheen, and he's a friendly, supportive, and attentive character. He's the most sophisticated artificial intelligence that Jim interacts with on the ship, 
and the most human-like. Jim is a mechanical engineer, so he sets to work on trying to repair his broken hibernation pod, but discovers it's not possible. Passengers were placed into hibernation in another facility. It requires special equipment. All the pods can do on the ship is keep you in hibernation. They can't put you under. The pod on the ship can't be reactivated, so he can't go back to sleep again. He also can't break into the command center. Jim goes back to the bar, feeling pretty defeated. But Arthur gives him some bartender wisdom and tells him to take advantage of the situation he finds himself in and live a little, to take a break from worrying. So, Jim takes some time off and enjoys the facilities and comforts of the Avalon, eating in nice restaurants, playing games, and even breaking into some luxury passenger quarters, the enormous Vienna suite. He also takes a spacewalk using a tether that's attached to the ship. About a year has passed, and he begins to contemplate suicide. But he eventually finds a fellow passenger, Aurora Lane, in her hibernation pod. Her video bio and interviews are available, so he starts to watch them to get to know her. She's a journalist. He finds her fascinating and begins to develop feelings for her, despite having never properly met her, obviously. A rather unethical and very dubious idea crosses Jim's mind. What if he was to wake her up? Jim is, after all, a lot like a man stranded on a desert island. Waking Aurora up knowing that he cannot put her back to sleep again would be ultimately condemning her to a life alone with him on the Avalon, and of course it would destroy the life that she had planned for herself on Homestead 2. Obviously a year of living in isolation has driven him to such desperation. Jim tries to talk himself out of it, but the idea has already consumed him, and he starts to cut off his beard because although he denies it to himself, he has already decided he's going to wake her up. And so he does it. He returns to his quarters shocked and in a state of disbelief at what he's just done. The plot is now starting to get pretty serious. Aurora awakens and he discovers her looking lost and confused walking around the concourse. He explains that their pods malfunctioned and that there's no way of going back to sleep. He also tells Arthur to never reveal to her that he woke her up. It's to remain a secret. That's important for later. While Aurora struggles to accept the situation, in the background, machines and functions on the ship are beginning to malfunction here and there. She visits the infirmary where she finds the auto dock, which is kind of a bio bed that heals you without the need of a doctor. She tries to break open the door of the command center just as Jim did, but obviously that doesn't work and so she spends some time adjusting to her new situation and journaling her experiences. She even interviews Jim because she's obviously still a journalist and wants to hear people's stories. She asks why he left Earth. He tells her because back on Earth, when something breaks down, it's just replaced, but on Homestead too, when something breaks, a mechanic can fix it, a new world still being built. He wants to fix problems. He wants to build a house and live in it. After some time mourning the loss of her old life, Aurora eventually settles in to building a new life with Jim. They spend some time together, he eventually asks her out, and they soon become an item, and for a while things are going very well indeed. About a year has passed since she's woken up, which means that it's been two years since Jim woke up. It's the night of her birthday drinks when the topic of her age comes up. She says to Arthur that there's no secrets between her and Jim, to which Arthur asks Jim if that is true, to which he replies, you heard the lady. Arthur takes this to mean that Jim has told her that he woke her up. And so when Jim leaves for a moment, Arthur spills the beans. And Jim is left with no choice but to confirm to Aurora what Arthur has just told her. The scene is really tense and Jennifer Lawrence really performs Aurora's emotional breakdown extremely well indeed. As much as Jim tries to explain why he woke her up, She's devastated and beyond furious. She's inconsolable. Her life has been ruined unnecessarily and she wants nothing to do with him. In the darkest moment of the film, she even becomes violent towards him. So the two of them are divided now, but over time the Avalon systems continue to malfunction, leading to some catastrophic systems failures. Suddenly another person is awoken. Chief Deck Officer Gus Mancuso, played by Lawrence Fishburne, a crew member. His pod malfunctioned, just like Jim's. Gus gets them into the command centre, and he begins to assess the extent of the damage. As he investigates the pods, he confirms that both his pod and Jim's malfunctioned, but he can see that Aurora's didn't malfunction. It had been tampered with. He realises that Jim did it. 
Also, Gus's pod failure was more severe than Jim's. Evidently, the life support functions were damaged, and that's why he doesn't feel so good. He's dying. He speaks to Aurora about what Jim did. She wants to know what Gus thinks. He tells her that it's like a drowning man trying to drag someone down with him. It's not right, but he's drowning. There's another major malfunction that happens while Aurora is swimming, which causes the gravity to fail, and the water in the swimming pool goes zero G. It's actually quite a cool scene, and it's very well done. Anyway, they figure out that there was a serious hull breach two years ago when Jim's pod failed. Gus's condition is getting worse, so they take him to the medical bay, and the auto doc tells him that he has progressive organ failure. He dies, and Jim and Aurora are forced to fix the ship by themselves. They go to engineering and find a series of hull breaches. There's one in the fusion reactor that's the source of all the ship's problems. Jim has to vent the reactor manually because the outer door is jammed. He has to cool the reactor or otherwise the ship will be destroyed. And he needs Aurora to pull a lever in engineering. Jim embarks on a dangerous spacewalk to accomplish this and risks his life in the process, requiring Aurora to go out and rescue him in a spacesuit. They succeed and the ship is fixed. She brings him back aboard the Avalon, but he's dead. But she uses Gus's wristband and ID number to get the auto dock to resuscitate him. It works, and they finally reconcile. So they take some time to repair Arthur, they give Gus a burial of sorts in space, and Jim begins to play around with the auto dock, discovering something interesting. As much as Jim can be criticised for waking Aurora up, there's two things to be considered. Firstly, if he hadn't woken her up, they would never have been able to fix the ship together. The ship would have been destroyed. All 5,000 passengers and 250 crew members would have been killed. It was just fortunate then that Jim brought her out of hibernation so that they could ultimately fix the Avalon and save not only themselves, but everyone else on board. So it certainly sounds like redemption for Jim. Secondly, in the end... Jim further makes amends by offering Aurora her old life back. He offers to place her back into hibernation via the auto dock, which she obviously refuses. But nevertheless, the offer was on the table. Even if it would have made her feel extremely guilty or even deeply sad for him, she chooses to stay with him and they live a life together on the Avalon. Over 88 years later, the crew and passengers awaken to find the ship looking very lived in. Andy Garcia is the captain, and he has a non-speaking cameo at the end. The film concludes with a recording from Aurora for the Avalon crew. She says, if you're reading this, the starship Avalon has reached its destination. A lot happened while you slept. A friend once said, you can't get so hung up on where you'd rather be, that you forget to make the most of where you are. We got lost along the way, but we found each other, and we made a life, a beautiful life together. We don't learn anything more about how their lives ended. The film leaves it up to your imagination, which I suppose for some people might be a bit frustrating. It's not quite as good an ending as it could have been. It's a bit of a letdown, actually. Presumably, if they grew old together, one of them was obviously left alone when the other died, so that would have been very tough. And having children would have been highly inadvisable because their children would have been condemned to a life aboard the Avalon for decades. There was an alternative ending that featured Andy Garcia for a few more minutes where he explores the various signs of how Jim and Aurora's lives went together over the years. But that was cut out and instead it's all left up to the audience to imagine how it went. Passengers does have a bit of a generic enough action sci-fi conclusion in my opinion. But the first two thirds of the film are really well done. It's not a perfect movie but it is enjoyable enough. A good concept, good acting some genuine fun, a nice soundtrack, and really good visual effects and action set pieces. I think it's worth a watch.